Greetings my friends and welcome to a brand new video and first off I'd like to thank um, General Death or JD as he's known, a good friend of the channel, a good friend of mine as well, been an excellent contributor to, the, to all the campaigns. I'd like to thank him and many others who have recommended that for a nation's guide we sort of divert, like move to the Great War mod to add a bit of variety, a bit of spice to sort of the nation's guide. And it was an excellent suggestion so I thought I'd pounce on that immediately and do a nation's guide here for the Great War mod. For those of you who have yet to play or are just currently playing or maybe thinking about playing um, the Great War mod, I know that many of you have also asked for videos how to A, download and B, to install the mod. Now I'm working on that bit by bit, but as you can imagine I do record these videos sometimes quite well in advance and sort of release them when I can. Time's a little bit tight for me, but I'm, I am working on those videos for those of you who would like to play uh, the Great War mod and um, uh, maybe just finding a little bit, a uh, few problems, maybe a little bit difficult to do so. I'm working on that for you my friends and I promise I'll try and release that within the next week or so if I can. But anyway, today we're going to be focusing on, for this nation's guide here, on Belgium. Now I know you probably think, well why Belgium, uh, Mallet, to start with? Well look, the thing is, most you can start with France, you can start with Germany, the huge nations, Russia, Britain, that type of thing. But I thought I'd start with something a little bit sort of different, a bit off kilter as it were, and start with the, one of the smallest factions, one of the smallest nations you can possibly start with. And they really are actually very, very important. They really are key. This nation is really, really important to the overall sort of campaign here, particularly what you can do within this campaign. So let's look at where we start off. We start off, of course, right here and sort of the, on the border of the North Sea here, the North Sea coastline is right here with Britain just across the channel here. So of course you've got a very, very excellent straight away, you've got an excellent trade partner here with Britain o over the overseas here and Britain really is an absolutely fantastic ally and indeed trade partner to have at your disposal. It really, really do provide not only military assistance but also a robust economy as well. So f to start with, you're already in a very good position in terms of a geographical location and also in terms of economic position as well, and also tactical, very, very, ta very important tactical position as well, not only for yourself, but also for France and indeed Britain, because you, you sort of, Belgium is or could be used as sort of a landing position for British troops to sort of take their fight to the, to the German front. Um, and also for France to be able to move their troops through, because you can see straight away from this as well, you're already allied with France, you're already allied with Britain as well. So again, they can move their troops f to and f from your sort of uh, your region, and also they can be used to protect Brussels as well, because of course allied, so they will indeed step forward and help you. But you also don't want to rely exclusively on their help, even though they're as powerful as they are. They will be bogged down, they will be drawn into a massive conflict with the Germans. That's going to tie up a lot of their forces, so they're not necessarily going to have the time nor the forces to be able to protect you as well. So it's really important that we do everything you can to really get your forces up as quickly as possible. Now remember, you are a single region. You are not going to be able to produce massive amount of troops. You're not going to be able to, you know, to be going absolutely gung ho here and just trying to take on the Germans by yourself. It simply will not work. When you're a small faction like this, you have to cooperate with other sort of nations in your military and your sort of your strategic positioning here, especially militarily, your 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 sort of overall goal is to aim is to is to aid an attack by either the British or the French into the Germans. You cannot take on the Germans by yourself. To do s if you do so you have to have a a very, very powerful uh, a sort of uh, army to go on the offensive with and also be a very powerful defensive army as well as the offensive army so that you've got something to protect Brussels but you've also got another sort of army to be able to go into the sort of you know the the attacking for you as it were but personally if it was me I would sort of look for the time when the French are going to start attacking the Germans and I would move in with French armies I would be part of the sort of a um, you know, supporting role with the French and that way then as the French sort of gain momentum, as their army sort of move into different locations, you can then start to look to a grow your sort of armies because you're obviously going to take start taking regions. Because if you've got the French attacking one region, that means the Germans are going to start pulling troops to sort of counteract and counterattack against the French, which means they're going to leave 
sort of region is very vulnerable to, a, a, to an attack, not by a massive army, but it'll be enough for you to take a region. And as you claim those regions, as you roll up those regions, then your economy becomes better. Then your trade increases. Then you're able to sort of grow uh, economically. You'll be able to grow your sort of infrastructure as well, getting the railways up and running, getting all of the sort of the infrastructure, the factories, the ports running. So you really are looking to s as a s in a support role, but that support role is tactically absolutely to your advantage. It really is. Don't look at it as if you're sort of tr trying to help the French do what do sort of do the French work for them. Look at it as sort of a, a, a you're sort of an integral lock, a, a wheel, a small wheel to start with in a massive sort of machine. But eventually you will be part of that, you'll be a massive cog within that machine because as the French sort of roll on and you help them support them, then you sort of gain the regions that you want, you gain the territory you want, to gain the economy that you want. And also let's not forget you've also got the Netherlands here, peace with the Netherlands, and again you'll be looking for sort of diplomatic sort of relations with the, with the Dutch as well because again they're only single nation by themselves, they're not, they're, not, they're not powerful to really stop an onslaught by the Germans, but together together as sort of working in cooperation with your sort of your regional partners then you can really become quite a potent force now to remember the Germans are a highly efficient war machine absolutely highly efficient and also their infrastructure is vast it stretches all the way to the to the eastern frontier right in Prussia and Poland all the way back to the west here to the side see the probably the watermark the the, the high tide as it were of this Strasbourg and Cleves here being Strasbourg here and Alicia and uh, Lorraine here really is a crucial crucial sort of anchor here for the German Western Front where they pivot their forces in and around the whole of this it really is a, a crucial hub here of production and economy for them within the region as you can see the fog of war here is absolutely brutal so you're not going to see so of course you know that spy network um, you know, being able to move your units into a position where they can have a clear view of what's coming, that is really is crucial here. But again, you've got the French here, and Paris is exceptionally close to you, it really is. Paris being an absolute powerhouse here, look at, let me look at Paris, it is absolutely bristling with production here, so you again, you've got a very powerful ally here on your sort of, you know, western flank as it were. Now, let's have a quick closer look what we start, you start with here. First of all, right up here you've got Cali. You've got no building in Cali at all. Nothing, you can't build anything because Cali is unavailable to, to, um, to build anything at the moment. But that will come in the future. You will be able to build in the future. Then, of course, our means here, you've got a mill town. And that is, of course, bringing in minus one happiness because industrialization plays a huge part in the morale of your populace here, especially the lower classes. They don't like change, they don't like industrialization at all. So you've got to keep a close eye on that. But it does bring down the recruitment costs for all land units here. Minus one, of course, for all naval units as well, and also generates a good amount of uh, regional wealth. And also, per turn, it brings in a good amount of regional wealth. Eight plus eight is not too bad at all. But again, you want to be upgrading this as possible. As you can see, you've got three pips upgrade you want to get to five that really would give you a significant economic boost and then of course you've got here the Ghent farmland here or the Gent farmland here okay you of course you can move it up to a small landing strip or of course you can go into industrial uh, f farming collective and that to be honest personally I would go for the economic put um, sort of root all the time 450 additional wealth plus three to turn plus six to replenishment in the region of course replenishment really is important here the quicker and the faster your troops replenish the quicker you can get them back into battle and then plus nine percent to population growth with again the more population you got the more your economy grows the more you can produce and of course that is that sort of ongoing effect then that knock-on effect down the road and of course right here almost on the front line here which you can build here in Liege now here you've got either a village or a college. Now, it's a difficult choice because you can look at village here and you can see, well, it's going to give me a bonus income to my tax. It's going to give me plus 2% bonus to town wealth and also 600 wealth. But remember, you're going to want to be able to have research and development here. And of course, we've got no educational buildings. So it's you're very, very limited to these v small choices what you can do here. But if you get a college, it opens up then research points. It opens up that ability uh, so you can get it you can spawn a bomber fighter reconnaissance plane which would be vital spawn a researcher 
um, and also it's supposed to reach a maximum of plus one. So you get a research coming out of this college. Personally, if it was me, I would definitely have Liège here as a college to boost your research, to get your research off the ground. So again, that's all you've got. Of course, you've got two river crossings here, right away in Flanders, between Flanders here and Cleve. <coughs> Excuse me, my friends. And of course, you've got the river running all the way through here, cutting right through um, the land here because there's two river crossings. Now, that provides or three river crossings, should I say, one into the Netherlands and two into sort of the outer regions here of Flanders. And indeed, then you've got another uh, river crossing here into uh, Lorraine, Alice, Lorraine, Lorraine here. But really, these are the two pivotal points here. These are the two you want to be guarding against any sort of German incursion. So keep an eye on that, my friends. This is they are really, really important. That these two bridges here are well guarded. Now let's have a look what you've got here in Brussels, the key, the capital here of Belgium. Now show where you've got a training ground which you can immediately upgrade to a small barracks. Let's see what you can get in training ground here. Training ground, um, you can already get Civic Guard, but you can only get Civic Guard very, very weak indeed, as you can see here. Range 145, but look at the accuracy, 35. They couldn't hit a barn door, they really couldn't. Um, and of course, melee and that pretty morale is pretty poor. Ammunition is 60. Reloading skill, 15, which is pretty much they're going to be fumbling as they reload. So that pretty much tells us you need to upgrade to small barracks as soon as possible. As you increase your recruitment capacity already instantly, lower classes aren't going to be happy. But the replenishment rate is going to be increased. Your research points for technology is excellent as well. But straight away you're moving into rifle infantry. That's much better. Look at that. Morale is up. Accuracy is up. Reloading skill is up. Absolutely. Straight away you can see the difference here. Start and end it. Move into professional as military professional soldiering as it were and then it opens up the addition here being able to get Congolese infantry, rifle infantry, Luxembourgish infantry and also conscripts here but the red circle means you can't get it yet unless you've re you researched it so you need doctrine war trench warfare for most of these here and also here you need colonial recruitment but it gives you rifle infantry which is a good starting point here for your, uh, your building an army so then that's as so you can go to thus far but you can upgrade as you go down and as you research eventually you'll be able to get better barracks better troops through that then of course you've got the town council here and straight away the town council gives you plus five bonus to regional income uh, plus one to repression plus three to income and of course you can get civic guard from here as well uh, you get t basically these are snipers and more conscripts but again if you move down to city council it gives you a huge boost in boost into your region income your tax plus five here to your town wealth plus two for repression recruitment capacity goes up by one game which is excellent and again you get the standard sort of ability to, to get civic guard and also enables these research here as well which is pretty good uh, mass propaganda is good self-determination is good as well um, press censorship can be good and of course you've got women in the workplace will boost boost your um, your output of your production very very much indeed and then you've got a choice here you can either go for soup kitchen but you need Marxism socialism personally I wouldn't go for soup kitchen it gives you plus one happiness here but it lowers your town wealth which I can't really see the point of especially when you're in this position then you've got craft workshops which gives you field guns that really is important but also gives you town wealth regional wealth and a plus three to town to regional wealth and then you've got the farmer's stores bigger increase here to do econo economy but personally if it was me I'd be going straight for crafts workshop for the field guns for the artillery it gives you and last but not least is autonomy now autonomy produces happiness for everybody all your citizens especially all the classes plus two happiness so this is basically used to offset the industrialization you've got to, to sort of crap ramp up so you're basically using autonomy to sort of balance that industrialism you've got to launch which makes people unhappy with autonomy which makes them ha which makes them happy and then industrial industrialization sorry makes them unhappy uh, but the problem with that is it reduces the bonus to region income here so you've getting it's a very 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 fine balance and actually got to do minus one as well to your town wealth a recruitment capacity increases but also gives you the ability to get civic guards but again you've got to find the fine balance between what you build and keeping your populace happy because if they rebel you're going to find yourself fighting a rebellion and also the enemy which is basically Germany as well so you've got to be very very careful what you do here don't go ramping up your industrial might at the expense of your 
civilians, your civil population, because they will rebel against you. They will hate it, and they will kick back hard, believe me. Then most of your troops will be tied down, crushing a rebellion, and basically keeping Brussels, uh, you know, from falling to a rebellion. So be very, very mindful of that when you start to sort of produce your industrial, you, um, your industrial sort of might, as it were. So that's where you start off with, and again, recruitment is only civic guard, uh, not the best, but again, you've got one, two, three, four, five, and if you get the barracks, it'll open up another two. So you get you can you can you can build recruit six units or straight off as soon as you get the industrial uh, the upgrade to barracks. Infrastructure again is already um, you don't even have basic rails. You're basically using road, but basic rails here plus one happiness all classes because of course they can travel on the railways and much faster to move from different regions 500 region wealth plus 6 year, but plus 7 replenishment rate because of course you can bring in more, uh, uh, reinforcements much faster by rail what a really really fantastic addition there to it and your standing army here is a f I liked how it's a uh, 2 rifle guard and 2 rifle infantry and a civic guard not a bad start actually and a, and a pretty large um, sort of civic defensive force here, which is in the grey here. Now, let's have a look at the government. Now, our government here is Albert the First, an absolute monarchy. That is really important here because you can move ministers in and out at will here, which is absolutely fantastic. Catholicism, um, with treasury is three thousand, which is not brilliant, but you can still do quite a lot of that if you manage your funds well. Of course, no, no zero percent to diplomatic relations and zero to prestige per turn. Population is 335 35 million. Uh, pro prosperity is meagre. Prestige rank majestic. Now, here's the important part tax income is 1204. Trade income is 656. Army upkeep is 473. So, again, getting 2387 per turn, as is, with nothing done at all. But as you start to add your army units, as you start to sort of build, then you're going to see yourself really sort of st the money going down. But if you do it again, it's a balancing act. Don't go spending all your money on your army. It is a com that will absolutely be self-defeatist. You must balance your military, your mi the military you want to sort of recruit, with the income. So my advice would be, build a, a, a sort of a, ba um, a barracks, and then build also an industrial building to counteract the money you've spent on the barracks, so that you've got something going out, but something coming in to balance it back out. And again, you're at war with the Ottomans. Germany and Austria. It's pretty much standard. Your allies are Russia, United Kingdom, France and Serbia, which is pretty good in trade partners here. We want to try and get those trade partners, big trade partners, but you want to try and increase that as best you can. Policies, our tax levels are, you know, in the middle here, but you can reduce them, which of course would increase growth, but it, you know, that would then see your immediate income, your immediate expenditure dropping quite quickly. Ministers here, got no candidates which is a bit of a problem here but again all of these give you no, no bonus whatsoever you don't get a, a bonus from any of these gentlemen at all in the cabinet absolute monarchy population is uh, po popularity is very low indeed very low f below 50 percent not good but hopefully you get some candidates eventually which will improve and increase the ability to move these but none of these ministers give you any benefits whatsoever you're basically stuck with these until new candidates appear and then, because you've got an absolute monarchy, you can move them in and out as you wish. And of course, trade here, United Kingdom, across on the sea route. Uh, a lot of other goods here. And of course, you've got a land route link uh, of trade goods with France. Now, let's have a look at diplomatic relations here. So, okay, Netherlands, straight away, you can already start to ask the Netherlands for trade. That's a, it, straight away a land based trade here with the Netherlands. Again, that's going to boost your rate trade income, which you definitely want to try and do. But unfortunately, all other trade ports are unavailable to you because you don't have enough capacity to be able to take that. That's the minor nations. The major nations here you've got Italy and you've also got Russia. Now that is going to come via sea. Now personally I would probably go for Russia over the Netherlands because you're going to get a massive boost here because of the size of Russia. Italy you can probably do the same as well but I would probably try and get make these two nations specifically Russia because they're more likely to give it to you because you're allied with them. So get that trade from Russia and Italy if you can. And if Italy aren't going to give you any trade, then you go to either Spain here, again, or with the Netherlands, which is a direct land link. So that's pretty much the diplomatic relations here. I don't think you can have any chance of stopping a war with Austria and Hungary and Germany. You could try and try and get a, you know, reduce hostility with them. 
and try and give yourself some breathing space but you're not going to be able to expand otherwise staying at war with them will hurt your diplomatic and your economics but it does give you the ability to expand into German territories then of course you've got the research here which you don't have ed any educational buildings that's why you want to build a building here in Liège but you are able to get signed films, nationalism Marxism and socialism and indeed war bonds uh, that gives you a plus five year to global sync. That's a, that's a pretty good one to get in war bonds. But for me, the first thing I would research without anything else, because you've already got mass mobilization, is trench warfare because it opens up all of these. Look at that. Chasseurs, a peed, rifle infantry, combat engineers, Luxembourgish infantry. Look at that. Railgun forward observers. It opens up a, a, a really nice amount of troops here. Congolese. It really is absolutely fantastic to be able to get so that my, my first thing to do is to absolutely get this as soon as you possibly can here and then once you've opened up the rest of the research try and move down the military and all indeed the civic buildings as quickly as you can to try and uh, improve that uh, what else we have here we've got of course building browsing we've got lists but so that is pretty much where you stand with Brussels what you can upgrade what you're looking for now in terms of expansion where you're going to go well of course you've got France here protecting your western f border your western flank and you've got Britain here pretty much keeping the North Sea absolutely clear so the immediate and obvious choice is going to be Cleves and Strasbourg now Strasbourg I would probably assume that France is going to be hitting Strasbourg by itself now that's an operation you could probably join in with to gain experience in com in combat with the French and also it's going to give you the, you know, the French know you're going to be a, a strong ally but remember if you strike out against Strasbourg you need something to defend Brussels with because if Amps if the, the Dutch I don't believe the Dutch are at war with no see they got the D war Dutch are not war with Germany at all they're neutral so they are not going to stop the Germans from mo moving into against, against Brussels in the Flanders here. So if you're going to join a fight with, with the French in Strasbourg, be wary that you leave something back here at home to guard against a counterattack by the Germans. Or you can strike out by yourself and move in to try and take Cleves. You can see Cleves is not heavily defended at all. The army here is negligible. It's absolutely nothing at all. They've got some civil guard here. But again, 329 income. And actually they just about got this under control here. The tax burden is massive because the Germans want to get as much money as they can to sort of keep the war machine going. So again, it's a, it's a difficult choice. You can either join the French or you can try and launch your own attack against Cleves. Or what you could do even is try and manoeuvre all the way around Strasbourg through the territory here and hit Stuttgart here. But again, that would be a pretty sort of, you know, that would be a pretty daring plan to be able to do that because it would leave your army right in the middle sort of right behind the enemy lines with no support or you could try and hit Oldenburg but remember if you hit Oldenburg you've got Berlin quite close and troops from Berlin will pour down in here and absolutely crush you ideally if it was me I'd either join an attack against Strasbourg for um, the experience and to sort of get the troops combat hardened or I'd attack Cleves straight across Flanders here jump across the bridge here into Cleve, take this and then try and hold it and this would be your front line because the Germans then would have to cross all these rivers here with the French already here so you'd hold Cleves, this would be your front line, you'd make Cleves then the front line battle against the Germans um, and of course if you wanted then to sort of, you've got of, of course you've got Antwerp here which is your absolute key trading hub here with every other nation and of course you can build transport ships and cargo ships, you can't build battle cruisers yet because you don't have the ability to do so but that doesn't count. And what am I talking about? Calais here. I was saying Calais could be, but it isn't. We don't have Calais. That's French. What an idiot I am. So we've only got Antwerp, which is crucial to hold that. But we've got no ability to build sort of military, you know, the, the sort of naval task force to hold and Antwerp. So you, you're pretty much relying on the French and the British to do it for you. But my friends, that is pretty much covering all you can do as be as Belgium. I know it's a pretty small nation to start with, but it's an interesting challenge. It really is a really, really interesting challenge because it provides you, you don't have the infrastructure, you don't have the massive military, the economy to sort of be producing lots and lots of units. You've got to think about this campaign in great detail, plan your moves very, very carefully. If you do so, you can go very, very far. But remember, you must use your allies 
and you must support your allies and use the support of your allies whenever you can because they are vital to your survival and to your success. But I hope you've enjoyed this campaign. I'd like to thank all of you, General Death, and all of you for recommending I do something like this. It has been I didn't really think to do this at all, but it's been fantastic. So I'd like to thank everybody for the support, not just in this campaign, but through all my campaigns. It means a lot to me. It's been absolutely fantastic. But I hope you've enjoyed this, my friends. If you have, please comment, like, and subscribe it. And um, I hope everything's going well for you, my friends. Hope you're having a good weekend. Um, got a new video coming up very soon as well. So I um, hope you're looking forward to that as much as I am to playing and also putting it up. But until next time, my friends, bye for now.